arriving at the Bibby Stockholm and you'd be forgiven for thinking this is a floating prison. 20 foot high metal fences surround the barge that'll soon be home to 500 male asylum seekers. On board and we get the first look at what life will be like. The majority will stay in ensuite twin rooms, each equipped with a bunk bed and a TV. They are basic and functional. There is a gym with a range of exercise equipment, as well as an IT room, which will provide Wi-Fi and computers. The facilities are designed to minimise the need for the asylum seekers to actually leave. So as well as their bedrooms, there are communal areas where they can watch TV and movies, and also internal outside space, where there's going to be things like basketball hoops and benches for them to relax outside. But the migrants, who will be towards the end of their claims, will be free to come and go into Weymouth, with a range of local activities being lined up. As you can see yourself, it isn't a floating prison. Um, they've got multiple recreational areas and outside areas to be able to, to have activities. We've also got local voluntary services who are looking at what activities can happen outside of the, outside of the barge. So things such as football and um, other activities like hiking and, and um, potentially looking at allotments and things like that. It's an example of the government's failure to deal with the immigration situation that we're in. Outside the port, the barge continues to divide. Regardless of the fact that they have a, a gym and three sofas in their lounge, it's a prison, isn't it? It's technically a prison or a slightly glorified version of a prison. The government hopes the barge and former military sites will house around 3,000 asylum seekers by the autumn. But that's a fraction of the 50,000 in hotels right now. And with more arriving, finding them a safe place, often against local opposition, is an increasingly difficult challenge. Dan Whitehead, Sky News in Portland, Dorset.